Welcome to the Mariana Islands and Saipan. Today I thought that we would be fly from Saipan to Guam, or at least that is the general idea of things. So we are going to insert the data cartridge. We are going to plug in the navigational route. And once that is done, we will get going almost immediately. So, big nice fence, big nine nice palm trees, I'll have to say. Clear to taxi to runway 7. Uh, copy that, ATC. We are clear to taxi to runway 7. This is, of course, a civilian airport, so it will be modeled as such. Lots of civilian facilities. The sphere you can see there is fairly typical for a civilian airport. So this will just be a standard issue military transfer flight. Now, you can also see that the runway here is essentially just... There, there seems to be one big, one small. Or maybe that's, the other one is just a larger taxiway in regards to larger passenger jets. I can't see any... Wait, there is actually a number there. Uh, number six. So, the small one is actually a runway as well. So, two runways on this base. But we got our call for number seven. So, that's where we will be going. Welcome to Saipan. Yes, uh, unfortunately we will be leaving Saipan and this glorious sunlight that we Swedes could use a little bit more of in our lives. A little bit more engine power there. We look both ways when crossing the street. Traffic control, this is uh, Enfield 1-1, one, one. we are on runway 7. We will be taking off as soon as feasible. Enfield 1-1, unable to clear for takeoff. Copy that, ATC. just below zone 1. And we are now heading for waypoint 1. I have to say that the details in the ocean with the shallow shallow texture and everything looks fantastic. It's a fairly nice terrain to just, you know, leisurely fly over. So we are going to continue this turn, we are going to go low over these houses. And end up soon at waypoint 1, which is going to be 25 kilometers dead ahead of us. Looks like there's a small lake just to our left here. I gotta say that, oh look, a golf course. Uh, the entire place is pretty darn nicely modeled, and it actually feels like you are flying over a, at least a community in a way that sometimes the 
Caucasus map can feel a little bit too empty or too outdated. So, flying low over the deep blue ocean is also pretty nice. This is going to be one of the largest water maps where, to be honest, the islands are mostly a sideshow. That is at least how I interpret the uh, lack of land mass on these islands. We can also see seagulls down there, and we also have another one of the islands coming up on our left. So, in terms of actual land mass, the Marianas doesn't really have all that much going for it. But that's not really why you get it. You get it either to replicate a Falklands kind of scenario with a carrier borne fleet attacking a couple of islands, or you get it for just the sheer pleasure of or, or wait, you don't you don't actually have to get it in any sense of the word, because the map is actually free of charge, so I don't actually have to persuade you to buy any of this. Because the Maria and to be honest, even if the Marianas map did cost money, I would probably have bought it because I'm a little bit of that kind of person in DCS. I want to have every map, even once I sell them fly, including uh, the channel map and Normandy. Uh, but the fact that they made this map free of charge is actually a very nice gesture from Eagle Dynamics. I could see them charge, you know, like 30 bucks for it or something like that, but uh, the fact that they don't is probably for the better. Especially since, in terms of actual land mass, there's really not much there. So we are coming up on one of the smaller islands just ahead, 10 kilometers away. I don't know if that is the bo former bomb range island, but it sh probably should be. Because Saipan is right over there, and this island is, as far as I can tell, one of the small islands that was once used as a bombing range during the Cold War. But I could be I could be wrong about that because I don't I don't have the history of the Marianas memorized in any sense, shape or form. It looks like to be a volcanic island at the very least, and there's a small reef just outside it. So the terrain shape looks actually pretty splendid. So we are just going to continue here onwards, and for the next stage we are actually going to make sure that we burn some fuel and fly fast. We are increasing throttle to zone 3, and the next waypoint is actually going to be several miles away, but we, we do have the fuel to spare, so we might as well Take the vegan in fast. Just going to stabilize the trim, and we can stabilize it zone one. Pushing the plane at zone three will simply burn too much of the fuel. Uh, while zone one will be able to maintain us for the time being, at, at least. So, the big blue ocean. Not really much to look at out here. All you can basically see is the water, and there is currently no ships or anything else like it on the surface, so... Not really much to look at here. Except the fact that we might want to stabilize our course a little bit, unless we want to get intimately familiar with the water. But that, that's one of the nice things about the Vigan. You get pretty nice and good feedback right in the HUD if you're about to go completely wrong. 
I didn't really factor any time on target into all of this, uh, so we don't actually have that uh, feedback on the HUD as well. So we are passing the fuel limit with the fuel with about 100, and we are closing in on the next waypoint with 40 kilometers left. So once we are over land again we will switch to subsonic in order to not uh, create any unnecessary noise complaints for the local airbase. So clamp a little bit. Just trim. And we should be good. until we go feed drive. This is Shooter, Enfield 1, Feed Drive. So, we go subsonic. No need for the noise complaints over land. Looks like we have one of the civilian airports right there. Looks like this is just the middle island. This is not Guam. There is an island between Saipan and Guam, and this is it. Hey, I want to take a look at that. Uh, I don't know if you ever played Crimson Skies, but in Crimson Skies you are essentially in Hawaii. And there is a formation on one of the maps where you find a treasure ship. And this place looks essentially just like it. I mean, the, the entire shape of this island looks a lot like the Crimson Skies Island right there. So, now we have to fly six more miles, and to be honest, for this stage I'm just going to go Zone 1 again, and then I am going to speed things up a bit. And there we go. Hyperdrive is so useful. To be honest, it's just standard issue time acceleration, so... We're going to disengage, and here we have Anderson Field, should be. At least if we are judging from all the shelters and other structures and parking spaces we've got there. We've also got base housing right below us. Seem to recall there was a movie uh, based on this field, uh, the Christmas Drop or whatever it was called. Uh, it was on Netflix. I mean, it was very cheesy, but in terms of com combining a cheesy Christmas movie with, you know, transport airplanes, you can't go wrong, right? 
actually you can, and that movie was just bland. But it, it wasn't bad bland. Never mind, I'm not. I'm, not, I'm gonna have to defend that in the comments most likely, so just forget I mentioned that movie. Um, speaking of stuff that is less bland, the islands also had a prominent role in Depth of Honor by Tom Clancy, where the Japanese decided that, yeah, we kind of want the islands back, and they would occupy it, and the uh, United States Navy would have to actually counterattack, and it would pit the F4 F-14s and F-18s of the U.S. Navy versus the F-1s and F-15s of the Japanese. Now, the story behind why it all happened is a little bit vague, but essentially it all comes down to Japanese businessmen wanting to take over their government so they get nukes and stuff like that. Yeah, it sounds better than my summary of it. Uh, but it still stretches the imagination a little bit and use suspension of disbelief. Anderson Tower, this is Anfield 1 1. We are coming in for landing. And that will be our landing. And we are going to check our procedures, the reverser. Make sure we just have everything that we need. So, the Marianas will obviously be a map where the vegan will feel right at home, thanks to the nature of the aircraft as an anti-ship platform. But it will also be interesting to see if people release, you know, campaigns and scenarios on it. And it's going to be interesting to see what people can make up. I mean, the terrain in itself is very interesting. And to be honest, I think that being a pilot that defends against an incoming naval threat would be far more interesting than one where you bomb, just fly and bomb the island. Because it would be interesting, like... Well, it's dusk. The enemy has sent in a frigate to bombard shore positions. You have to destroy the frigate, and I'm just gonna recite Falkland stuff, ain't I? Because that was pretty much right out of the Falklands. So, we are coming down here. Probably a little hard, but the reverse will take care of that. So... This is actually a base that was built to handle B-52, so that could also be something very nice, you know, sending a bunch of land-based bombers out against a navy. Maybe even do a little bit of a Battle of Midway style scenario with Guam in the center, or maybe even a... Sm <laughs> actually, the, the idea that just struck me is very, very fun. Imagine just the two different islands being at war with, with each other, and each of them has like half a dozen Cold War era aircraft, like MiG-21 versus MiG-21 or something equally stupid, and then ships and everything to match that. That, that, that is the kind of campaign I myself might actually make on this map. Where, or a coin kind of map, where it's ca all about the counterinsurgency. So, we are just going to hijack this hangar, and that has been the end of the Marianas test flight from Saipan to Anderson Field on Guam. This is Shooter, and I am signing off.